This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. off the northwest coast of Norway are the center of the Norwegian industry that prepares fish oil. The storage tanks can be seen as the camera travels past. It is a desolate corner of the icy roof of the world, near famous Narvik, where the German navy was smashed. <laughs> Among these islands there is Svalbard in the West Fjord. Nearby is Breshni on the island of Hinoi. Before the World War swept neutral Norway into its fearful jaws, the inhabitants of the Lofoten Islands earned a laborious livelihood from the harvest of the sea. The manufacture of cod liver oil to build strong young bodies from the frail frames of sickly children. That was the main business of these islands. But the Nazis needed oil for their war machine. They needed glycerine for explosives. They overran Norway and they forced these fishermen to work for a harvest of destruction. Men and women of the lands of Germany's so-called new order have no choice in their mode of living. They must be enslaved to Hitler's warlords. They must be slaves in the factories he steals from them. But for many of those Lofoten Islanders, liberty was approaching out of the night. As day broke, the raiding units split up. One of our cameras went to the island of Hinoi. Here the Navy light forces had been detailed to sink one of the ships engaged in the production of oil for Hitler. But this was no kind of sinking that the Nazis used. The crew was warned to abandon ship before a shot was fired. shells were sufficient to finish the floating laboratory of war. While the ship is settling in the rocky harbor, a boat is lowered by one of the raiding ships to rescue a man from the sea. Meanwhile, some of the raiding party have gone ashore. They're signaling that their work is done. So now we are heading south for Svalbard. The Nazis lost 11 ships in this raid, but it was a scientific raid designed to do the maximum damage. It was so well planned that there was almost no opposition. There's no sign of life as we approach Svalbard for episode number two. The landing party went ashore and arrested German SA men and Quisling. Others began the systematic destruction. Within a few minutes of the landing, Quislings and Germans were prisoners. Telegraph office was in charge of British Tommies. Next on the list were the oil storage tanks.
forces resisted. The wounded were taken carefully on board, but our forces suffered no casualties. Then came the glorious hour for these Norwegian islanders. Passage back to freedom, and they jumped at it. Back to freedom, and the chance to serve Norway by the side of Britain in the fight against Nazi tyranny. This is the outstanding feature of Hitler's new order. All those who can escape from it leave at the first chance. This chance came at the hands of the Navy and Army cooperating, assisting by Norwegian volunteers who trained in Britain. These are the quizzling traitors who also left, not so willingly. They were taken out in the flat bottom boats used by our landing parties. Germans who were working on the new seaplane base were brought out as prisoners. Despite the Nazi boasts, it has proved that Hitler is incapable of defending his vital war production along that enormous coastline. So the ships pull out to return to a British port, their job brilliantly carried out. There will be no more production here for many months to come. Warships, prison ships, and ships to carry light-hearted Norwegian youth back to the chance to fight again. Among those on board was Mr. William Hawes, the British manager of an oil firm who has been captive since Norway fell. He gave valuable aid to the landing party as a guide to the factories. Ships turned south and west. Lonely Lofoten was left to its unproductive solitude. One more powerful weapon smashed from the mailed fist of Germany. <laughs> 